Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth. It's good to have you. Today I'm going to be doing an in the hoop project using my Janome 550 embroidery machine to make a notebook cover. My notebook is inspired by a design that um, designs by Little B has on her website. Uh, unfortunately, I am unable to use that design because the notebook that is used for that project is very small, not really available in the UK. So I have done it myself um, using Embird. I've, re, um, I've redesigned it for a size that is available in the UK. So if you would like to see how I do that, stay tuned. Okay, so before I start my um, in hoop project, I've got some sublimation to do because I'm going to be doing an um, applique on my um, notebook. So I've sublimated um, this on my um, Epson 2720 Eco Tank printer, um, and it's basically like lined, so it looks like a notebook. Okay, so this will be going on the front of the notebook um, and I've also got here some fabric some polyester fabric right here as well so I'm going to be sublimating uh, those uh, lines onto this fabric so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to press this so to get out any moisture and to um, reduce the amount of wrinkles that are in the fabric Just placing that down and I'm just going to press it for a few seconds. Okay, now that is uh, pressed and we've got the any moisture that would have been in the fabric out, I'm now going to lint roll any fuzzies or uh, bits of lint off the fabric because you want that off when you're sublimating otherwise you'll get some blue uh, kind of fluffy bits that are no longer able to be removed once you've done the sublimation so get all that off right and here is my image right here so I'm going to place that down on my fabric. Like so. And I'm going to now uh, take that down. So it doesn't move. Because if it does move, then you'll get um, ghosting, and we do not want any ghosting. So I'm just going to take that down. Okay, lovely. And I have also got some uh, parchment paper here that I'm going to put on the top and that will stop kind of any transfers, if any, um, going onto my, um, my press and ruining my press. So just putting this layer of protection on. Just a little bit of tape, just so it doesn't move. Okay, I think we are good to go. To go. Right, so just centre that on my press. Okay, and now I'm going to press this 200 degrees Celsius and I'm going to press that for 
60 seconds. Okay, so we are now done. I'm now going to remove it and see if we have a nice sublimated, oh, and it's come out really lovely. Really well. I love when sublimation turns out really nicely. And we can see there. Sublimated really well on there. Okay, and the colors are great. Brilliant. What I'm going to do now is, because it's quite a flimsy material, I've got some um, fusible interfacing just to make it a bit more sturdy and not so flimsy and floppy. Okay, so I'm just going to place this on the back of the sublimation, just like that. just flip that over just in case we've had transfer that I can't see so just gonna place the interfacing down like that I've cut it too big but never mind should be fine like that and I'm just gonna put that um, I'm just gonna reuse this uh, parchment paper as well. I'm just being extra cautious, but why not? And I'm just gonna press this for a few seconds just so it fuses onto the back of the fabric. I'm placing the shiny side down of the interfacing, because that's the side that has the glue. And then I'm just gonna press this for a few seconds. I'll just go again and press it down. No problem. And I think it has. So that's down now. Yep. It's down. A little bit creased. I'm not sure why it's kind of creased like that. But I think I'm going to press it from the front also. I'm not loving that. loving that at all. Let's just press it for a little bit. It's got a few wrinkles in it. I'm not loving that. You can see there. I don't know if you could pick up on the, the wrinkles. I'm not sure why it's done that. But we're just going to go with it. I think it's fine. I think it's okay. So we're just going to go with it. Okay, so that is our um, applique piece done. So now I'm going to cut this up to size and then we're going to start the actual embroidery. Right, so I have cut my um, 
applique piece. I um, ironed it with a steam iron so it got out most of those um, creases that you would have seen earlier. Also here I have my faux leather pieces. So I've got two pieces that are exactly the same size. One will be for the front and one will be for the back. And I've also got the pocket pieces here also. I will um, put the measurements of uh, these pieces of fabrics in the um, description box. The thread that I will be using today, I've already put them, some of them on my stand, my thread stand. I'm going to be using this um, Pearl Aqua. Um, I've also got Canary Yellow. I've got black, then I've got grey, and I've got white, a pale pink, and this bamboo colour also. So those are all the threads that I'm going to be using today. So now is that time, the most exciting time, when I take you to the machine. Okay, so we are now at the machine, so the first thing I am going to do is do my uh, my placement stitch. So I've already hooped my stabilizer. Um, this is um, cutaway stabilizer that I'm using, and I'm using the largest hoop in my Janome uh, 550 embroidery machine. It's the R um, 36B, which is 200 millimeters by 360 millimeters so that is what I digitized my um, design on in Embird I'm using the largest uh, hoop and um, as I said in the beginning um, this design is inspired by designs by um, Little Bee she has a notebook cover however the size of the notebook um, cover is not a notebook size that's readily available in the UK so I um, came up with my own design and um, made it in a size that I know that I'd be able to get a notebook um, big enough to to fit in it or small enough to fit in it because the ones in America are super tiny and we just don't have that here in the UK well we do but they are super expensive I know that uh, some of the um, American YouTubers were saying they can get uh, they can get four for a dollar or something like that, and over here it's like three dollars for just one, so um, or three pounds rather for just one. So I've um, solved that problem. I digitized it myself. Anyway, let's get on with the project. So my hoop is in. So the first thing I'm going to do is do my placement stitch. Okay, so that is my placement stitch done. I'm now going to put down my um, faux leather fabric. <clears throat> so I'm gonna place that down, making sure it's covering the entire uh, placement. So I'm just checking the sides as well and all the edges. I'm always super cautious when it comes to the um, <laughs> placing of the fabric because I try and save as much fabric as I can. I don't make it too big. Right, so I've put down my faux leather. Now it's going to do the um, placement stitch for the um, applique. Okay, so that is the placement stitch for the applique. So I have my applique here. Uh, I'm not sure why. Okay, it didn't cut the thread because. So let me just cut that. Okay, brilliant. Okay, 
so I'm going to put my fabric down now, my um, sublimated fabric. Okay, so now we're going to do the um, tack down stitch. Just going to stop it and just snip this bit of thread off and in fact I'm going to stop it there because when I digitized this I forgot to put down my tack down stitch. So now I am now going to um, remove it from the hoop. And I'm going to um, cut around um, this part here. So thank goodness I remembered um, that I hadn't done that. So I'm just going to cut around, staying as close to the stitches as I can, but trying not to um, cut it or cut my stitches. So I won't bore you with this part, um, I'm basically just going to cut around, all the way around, so I will be back. I have cut around my, um, my applique piece, so I'm just going to continue uh, with the um, satin stitch now. Okay, so my satin stitch is now done. I've just done a colour change. And now I'm um, going to be doing the actual uh, pencil part of my design. Okay, so that is the pencil part done. I'm now just going to do a quick uh, color change. Always pull out your thread from the bottom. So you cut and then you pull it out from um, the needle part, never pull it out backwards. It will um, ruin your machine. So I'm just going to do a color change. I now need to put my black thread in for the next part. Okay, so that's my black thread in. And we can now continue with the design. So that one was pretty quick. I now have to change again, quick color change. It seems like a bother because it's just a single needle machine. However, you do get um, used to um, changing the thread. And it doesn't become too much of a bother. I mean, it'll be ideal if, you know, I had a multi-needle machine, but I don't. So, just have to roll with what we've got. 
Okay, so that is my thread um, changed. So we now just continue with our design. Okay, that's that one done. So I'm just gonna do a quick change and I'll be back because I'm pretty sure you don't wanna watch that. Or I might let you watch it sometimes, but not right now. Okay, so I've done my color change and now it's just going to do the um, metal part of the um, pencil. This one's super quick. Only a tiny little stitch. Okay. The next part, I believe, is the um, placement for the um, snap. So I'm just going to leave it black because it doesn't really matter what colour it is, you won't see it anyway. So, just use the black to do that. Okay, so that is the placement for the snap and we are almost ready. So, I'm going to do a last colour change. And then I'm going to be putting the, um, the back pieces and the pockets for the um, netbook. Okay, so the main uh, part of um, the design is done. What I'm going to do now is... Um, I have these, um, when I digitise this, I added some uh, little, don't know if the camera is going to pick it up, there we go, I added these little notches and those um, just give me a guide as to where my um, pockets are going to be. So I'm just using a pen to just make that a little bit longer. I've placed down my um, the back of my um, notebook cover and I'm just going to use some masking tape to just put that in place. I know um, some people use uh, specialised um, embroidery tape. I don't have that, but I've, I've used this quite a few times and it works really well. So, just a tiny bit of tape, and I'm again not pressing too hard down on my um, stabiliser because I don't want to shift it in any way. When I flip it back over, then I'll, I can then give it a good press down. But for now, I'm just going to be quite gentle.
tape top at the back and what I do is I flip it over because now it's nice and flat and then I can press the tape on and that um, reduces the likelihood of the um, stabilizer shifting and the whole design being ruined so I'm just pressing down so that I know the tape is kind of stuck on the stabilizer properly and all the bits that it needs to be stuck on right that's now done I am now going to take it over to the machine so I'm just going to return the hoop and this is now going to be the final uh, the final stitch So that is in, clipped in, and now we are good to go. And that is it done. So I'm just going to remove it from the hoop and take it to the table. And then we're going to go and finish off by cutting around it and adding the snaps. Okay, so we are now back at the table where I am going to be unhooping this. And just making sure everything looks good at the back. Yep, before I unhoop it. Yep, looking good. Looking good. Okay, so I'm now going to unhoop this. So I've cut all around the um, notebook now. There's the back and there's the front. And now all that remains is adding the snaps. I have my notebook here. Um, I got this notebook from Amazon. I love this notebook. Um, yeah, I just love it. So it's the perfect size. I actually use the um, dimensions for this notebook to um, to create my design. Okay, because this is a notebook that we can get quite easily, or well, this size anyway in the UK. So it would go in like this. Just like that. And the nice thing about it, it has a little pocket, the actual notebook. Okay, so that is how it would look. Just like that. So, I need to now add the snap. So, the snaps that I am going to be using, I've decided this colour would be quite nice because it goes with the... Um, satin stitch around their plique so that's what I'll be using there so I have this uh, pokey tool I have this pokey tool here so what I do is I poke through my uh, placement for my tab, like that. And you want to have your notebook inside so you can kind of adjust how you want your actual snap tab to, to sit. And I want it just like that. Yep, I like it just like that. So now that I have it where I want it, 
I'm going to poke all the way through just to put a little mark there and that's where I'm going to put my other side of my, my snout so I'm going to make that a little bit bigger okay and what I like to do is on the actual snap tab I like to have the male part of the um, snap so you need let me just come up close you need two of these the actual pins you need two two of these pins and then you need a male and female part so this is the male part and this is the female part so I like to put this male part on my actual snap snap tab I don't know why I don't think it makes a difference but that is what I like to do so and I will link where I got these uh, snaps from in the description box now they're not the longest and I've got quite a bit of thick uh, fabric here so that's something to bear in mind when you were doing um, your projects that um, you take into consideration the thickness of your actual material so I normally just squeeze a little then turn squeeze turn and squeeze inside and makes it nice and flat otherwise sometimes it's kind of uh, wonky right now I can remove my notebook And then you need to put this part of your um, snap so the pin side goes inside okay I think I need to make that hole a little bit bigger just slightly bigger just so it's easy for me to put through okay my all put that through the, the inside of your notebook I'm still finding it a bit tricky to locate the hole I think I need to make I'll push it in from this side and give it a little twist around yep that's better okay lovely now you can see the hole okay so again we're going to put the pin side on the inside of the notebook okay and then you put the female side on like that Gonna test this out make sure it's all working well yep we are good to go right let's put our notebook back I feel like cutting that bit off but I think I'll leave it on so just slide that part in and this part here And there you have it a cute little notebook very nice indeed so if you found this video useful or interesting and would like to see more projects from me please like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet done so and as always guys 
don't have a good day have an amazing day bye